Hi everyone, welcome to the 2023 Hoyt Recurve product launch. I'm here with Doug Denton, Hoyt Recurve brand manager, and Brady Ellison, world record holder, world champion, recurve extraordinaire. My name is Steve Anderson, and I'm really happy to be showing you guys the new Axia limb from Hoyt. Uh, Doug, you're the one who is the brains behind this limb. Why don't you give us a little rundown about it? Absolutely, so all new Formula and Grand Prix Axia limb, uh, available in short, medium, and long in the Formula version, and in the Grand Prix version, available short, medium, and long, and extra long. Um, so, poundage range for both Formula and Recurve are 22 pounds to 50, which is in two pound increments, which is what we've had uh, for a number of years now. Uh, we have an all new resin infused proprietary core in this limb. Never used it before, so really excited about that. We it have sounds that. interesting. Yeah. It, it is. It's uh, a lot of benefits there for, for the recurve archer. Uh, we have an all new eight layer carbon construction that we've never utilized before. Uh, we'll go into some more details with that as well. And an all new uh, wedge design um, to really add some optimum performance and smoothness to the limb. So yeah, we're, let's start with the core you were talking about there. Let's hear about that. Yeah, resin, so resin infused. Resin infused core. So it is a uh, it is a material that we have partnered with a company here in the states. Uh, they produce it especially for Hoyt. Uh, went through a lot of different uh, prototyping and testing, with the whole goal to have the most stable, consistent, smoothest, fastest core material that we could possibly produce. And it's absolutely amazing with all the features but just in a shooter's perspective what this core did for the consistency of the limb. Yeah so you bring up a really good point so uh, one of the things that we're really shooting for at Hoyt is obviously durability first and foremost uh, has to pass all of our durability testing so with what we do with our testing we do a dry fire uh, test which is taking a pair of lambs pulling it back to 30 inches and just letting them just just <laughs> hammering them just hammering them yeah. and uh, it's a fun room to be in while that's happening no, right? it is a very loud room to be in yeah. uh, not not a whole lot of fun to be honest but it is critical that we do this because we want to have the most durable limbs that we possibly can have to hit the recurve market regardless if you're a a beginner archer getting your first <laughs> set of limbs or if you're on that olympic stage shooting for the olympic gold medal we want to have the, uh, the consistency, the durability. Uh, we also take the limbs and we cycle them a million times. Now, that's a million pulls to 30 inches and back. It takes three weeks, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't stop. And it takes three weeks to get to a million cycles. And that's the room in here that gets super hot just because that thing's constantly going, right? It is, yeah. It's just, it's just matter of fact, it's always running. We, we at Hoyt are constantly developing and engineering new product. I'm constantly looking at how can I break the barriers on what recurve limb designs are and how to make them better. And uh, you know, and, and truth be told, 95, 96% of the product that I engineer, the world will never never see because it just doesn't make the, the grade. The Axia, the Axia made the cut. Um, really excited about this limb. So we have this new core material. Brady, you made a comment about uh, it's extremely stable, and it is. Um, past uh, products that we've had and tested would actually, you could see a small shift in uh, poundage uh, through that million cycles, through those dry fires. Uh, what we have seen with this limb is under a quarter pound change after a million cycles. Now think about that, a million cycles pulling your bow. There's not an archer on this planet that has done that with their bow. Um, and we not have- Not on a single set of limbs. Not on a single <laughs> set of limbs, correct. Uh, so extremely stable. The other thing with the stability of this core um, and also the eight layer carbon construction. So let, let's, let's jump into the carbon construction real quick. So one thing that consumers will see and archers will see first and foremost is the carbon skin looks completely different than the limbs that we currently had. Uh, its predecessor, the Velos. So what we have here is a wider spread toe of the carbon. And so you see that it's woven together. 
bit we have, it's wider, which leaves uh, less, basically, places for that carbon to go in and out. And so you have less transition points all the way through the limb. So if you look at pretty much, we're the only company that has a carbon material like this. If you look at all other companies, the, the pattern is really tight. The weave is and, smaller. And a lot smaller, so you have a lot more areas for, uh, for concern, potential concern there. So we widened that, which gave it extreme durability for us. Um, but also, with how we engineered the, uh, the carbon skin, and, it, and believe me, it is an engineered product. It is a proprietary product for us that I work with uh, some, some special carbon experts uh, here in the States to help develop this product. And uh, what you see on the surface, there's so many other layers of carbon underneath that that, right. that you don't see that are laid up in specific angles to give optimized speed, stability, uh, smoothness of the limb, uh, and just all around accuracy and performance. The, the core material with the stability that we've seen just in our testing also transcends out to the field. It's going to have to. I mean, if you think about all the, all the cycling and the dry firing that these limbs have gone through, to lose a quarter of a pound is insane. Uh, and, and really what that's going to lead to on the field is on those hot and humid days where you start off cold and you go to hot and humid or like big temperature changes or when you're shooting a World Cup here in Salt Lake City and the turf is 130 degrees. Well actually the turf is 150 degrees. <laughs> um, and, and you bring up a really good point there. So I, I do a lot of testing on that field. So here in Salt Lake, um, we during the summer, we have some really, really hot days. Yeah, it's 105 um, a lot regularly. Right, and so that field that, that has that astral turf on there actually gets to be over 150 degrees. I've measured it to 157 degrees uh, when I was doing the testing. Literally, you walk out on the field and, and your feet are hot. Uh, it's it's pretty, uh, pretty crazy. But it gives us a great place to truly do some really good recurved limb testing. And real world testing. It is. Yeah, I mean, it's extreme, but it's real world testing. It's, it's what we're going to do. You could stand there, be in the morning, shoot in the sun, all day long and measure what these limbs are going to do and these limbs are above and beyond anything that's ever been made i think 100 um, percent and at least anything that i've engineered I, I can put it that way uh so let me walk you through some of the testing that i've done on that on that field there at easton during those 100 degree plus days where yeah. the field itself is a, a 155 degrees so i've taken uh our limbs and we can see that this construction here, we, we obviously have some, some graphics down here, but we have a lot of just exposed uh, carbon, you know, where it's just black. So uh, it actually can, can, it's just left out there to absorb the heat and kind of by design on, on some aspects of this. So I took axial limbs, I painted them all white. I had some that were just completely black. Of course, we have the product that we have in front of us. And I start doing testing with that, with how the limb changes every half hour as far as poundage, um, tiller, and brace height. And then we could also shoot the limbs and see how the sight marks are changing at 70 meters. So with the axial limb, what I started to see was the white limbs took an hour to really get to a... Um, a stable temperature to where they, they heat it up as much as they could yes they get they get to a point that they're not going to heat up anymore the all black took about 20 minutes to get to that temperature and then this limb is like 22 23 minutes because we do have a little bit of white down here now what that really means is during the course of the day you know and I wanted to see if we was having any weight shift or change and the thing with the, the axial limb, even when you got to that higher temperatures of the limb on such a hot field, uh, the shift in weight was so minute that it did not shift my side mark. And, and that's huge, I mean, so I mean, it's your internal testing, dry fire and cycling, and then in the heat, 
all are getting the same results, which is really, really incredible. Yeah, so really what that means to the archers, especially if, you, if you're starting a day and you have three ends of practice to warm up and the sun is coming up, you're not going to see a shift from your practice arrows to the heat of the day when you're starting your, your next 36 arrows and see a shift in any of your sight marks due to any changing of the limb. Incredibly stable, smooth, fast, uh, fast limb. So a lot of questions we get with recurve limbs are, are, are they faster than, than what uh, my previous versions were, you know? And, yeah. And, and that's a, it's a, it's a good question, it's a valid question. It's a hard question to answer with a lot of people uh, because there's so many different variables from uh, poundage of limb, length of limb, uh, spine of arrow, a type of arrow, yep. uh, finger tab, finger tab material, all kinds of differences. But what I can tell you is with my personal setups, comparing it to the Velos limbs, I didn't see any shift in speed or performance. I shoot the exact same speed with a tuned setup with the Axia limb as I do the Velos limb. And that, that's an important point to mention there is, is when, we're, when we're talking speeds, you want to talk about a tuned bow to a tuned bow. Uh, you know, and, and what I found is really, you know, my arrows tune within four or five feet per second, no matter the one. And, and I almost think the arrows tune more off of speed than they do off of a poundage. So some limbs you might tune at 50 pounds and shoot 208, and you know some limbs you might shoot at 47 pounds, but you're still shooting at 208 with that same tuned bow. So you know it's really just adjusting the poundage to where you want to feel and then building an arrow to that, regardless of, of what that speed's gonna do. Because it is so hard to explain or to be able, like this is our fastest limb. Well, we can't say that this is the fastest limb you've ever built, but I know that I can say that this is the most consistent limb you've ever built. Consistent limb, um, and that consistency also rolls over into accuracy. Yep. Uh, so you, you, you take a limb and you make it more consistent, you make it more stable. That's just going to equate to higher scores when you walk down with the target and more consistent grouping because you are getting a much more consistent energy transfer from the limbs into your arrow. And that right there at the end of the day is, is what really archery is all about, is being the most consistent we possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. The person like Brady might see that stability shift quicker than uh, is, you know, a standard a normal archer, an average or intermediate archer. And they may not pick up on that for a couple ends and that's lost points. You know? it, it is, but what, you know, I'm, I'm kind of that intermediate archer, even though I've been playing archery for a long time. I've, ne I've never reached your level by any means, uh, but I just love to shoot. I love to watch arrow fly. Um, and what I have noticed is I shoot tighter groups. Now, it's all relative, right? My groups aren't the size of the, of the X ring, but it's something that keeps me coming back to archery. And I'm, I'm excited to go out there and watch those arrows fly, go down the target, and see that I'm actually performing better. It makes me excited. It makes me love archery, or remember why I still love archery, and that's what's going to happen to um, the archers that are that are new or the intermediate, all the way to the elite level. Is they're going to start to see those performance gains, and there's that little bit of consistency gains, which then drives that excitement, right. and why we all picked up archery in the first place, and why we shoot. Really, really excited to get this limb out in the field. Yeah. So, Axia limb, we have. Optimized torsional stability. We haven't hit on that. Let yeah, me, yeah. Let me talk to you what that really means. So I have, a, I have an analogy for that too. I've thought about that a lot. Okay. Well, you and I've talked about it a lot yeah, because yeah. Um, it's it's one of the things that I really try to focus in on with a recurve limb. So what I mean by optimum torsional stability. So we all, you know, take a limb and you're like, oh, this is really, you know, I can't twist it. And then we've all had limbs that like, it just really feels flimsy. There is a level that you want the limb to be able to, to react and flex and, and honestly have a little torsional uh, movement. Movement, thank you. Right. Movement there to really optimize accuracy for the limb. Uh, and we've done that with this uh, eight layer carbon construction. I'm able to really dial in that truly the optimum level of torsional stability. The 
best way I feel like I can describe it and, and bear with this uh, uh, explanation is we, we've all been in a vehicle and we hit a hit a bump in, in the road and we have shocks on our car right and it absorbs that shock well as recurve archers we have our fingers that we release with and if we get hung up on the shock it actually induces a little different movement into that string and what's really great about this limb is this limb will act like that shock absorber it will absorb that little hang up on the shot to where that string is backtracking properly and the arrow is releasing more on the optimum location than limbs that are don't aren't built with the optimum torsional stability and uh, that's really one of the key factors of making it a more accurate, more forgiving limb. Now, that doesn't mean that it's magic you're going to shoot tens every time you shoot. <laughs> Start so, plucking the string and it's going there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dang it. I mean, there, there is a level of archery that it is, uh, you know, it is archery. We are behind the bow. It, it is us shooting it. But to have just that little bit of comfort level that I have my shock absorber up here to absorb my little mishaps when I release incorrectly, that gives me a level of confidence that, that I really... Uh, uh, enjoy. That's how I was looking at it. Like, you and I watch Formula One, and on a Formula One car, if the suspension's too stiff, they've got no forgiveness over the curb, yep. right? And it, it causes problems. If the suspension's too soft, they don't have any precision, right? They're sloppy on the track. They can't. Yep. Hit and they, the lose, they, they lose speed. Yeah, this that optimal range in, in that allows them to hit the corners, right? Run through the curbs, all that fun stuff. Kind of the same in a limb. Um, Little different game but you know <laughs> it is concept but it is the same concept where optimizing the tor torsional stability just truly just makes the whole limb more forgiving faster smoother it just it's it's truly is everything that uh, um, the recurve archer is looking for it, it's what it's what we need to just be able to shoot the bow you want to go it? shoot and not be thinking all the time right well, just go not shoot not like that but it's it's so nice when you have a bow that you just go and shoot and you don't have to fight it all the time or you don't like just like always or like trying to have to push and give so much extra energy to shoot it well and you just go out there shoot your bow shoot your 720 because you said we're going to do nothing but shoot tens and Perfect. go <laughs> Steve how you might relate to it is you've had compound setups because you know world-class compound shooter that you've had compound setups that are just easier to shoot than others. Right. Now you still might have a bow that you go pound the tin with, that you feel like you have to work at it. Yeah, and that gets there. Um, you, you know, and just I was kind of thinking through this on the whole limb as as it goes. You know, for me, I always think about stability in terms of um, like on the field archery range, where I, field archery is my favorite game. You don't want to have issues with sight marks. You know, you want to be, your sight marks yeah. throughout the day need to be hitting the same. Right. And so I always have a little bit beefier strings to help keep stable sight marks. And this limb's got a little bit more stable nature to it just by the design of that resin infused core. And, um, you know, throughout the course, I, I thought about, Brady, you're getting on a plane sometimes in Arizona, it's 100 million degrees. <laughs> you go to wherever, up in the air, your bow's down in the hold, and it's hitting like, uh, those things come off, and they're like ice cold sometimes. And not that you're immediately then stringing it up and shooting it, but that limb's enduring that significant change in temperature. And then you're going to go somewhere humid and shoot it there. You know, maybe you're, uh, wherever, pick your uh, Florida Gator Cup, or pick a million places we go that are humid to shoot archery. Um, you know, and this one, you just want a bow that, Feels and shoots consistently, shot to shot to shot. Whether the rain is out or the sun is shining, or you've got you know a vest on to keep warm. Or well, I'm definitely a fair weather archer, so I probably wouldn't go practice in the rain. <laughs> but um, I, I do agree with what you're saying. Like Doug, I think you've done a great job on this slim, and it's it's going to be more consistent. It's going to hold sight marks, and it's going to it, it's going to change change the way we shoot things and and we'll shoot some good scores and some better scores probably easier than than we have in the past right and and do it in all weather conditions yep. whether it's the hot blistering summer days to rolling into the fall that's a little bit cooler weather to going to a, 
to Columbia and have to shoot in pouring rain. You know, yeah. it's it. It's we 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 wanted to focus in to hit all the key points of speed, durability, smoothness, performance, but also consistency in all weather conditions. Beyond that, I really like the look of the graphic. Brady, you were commenting on that too. Yeah, I, I actually, when I first saw it, I, I was impressed. It's a, it's a different look than what we've seen before. And yeah. It'll go good. You I, know, I'm not totally certain what the concept was. We have to ask Mitch. He's the, the designer there, but it's cool looking. I love the, the, the white to black or white to the carbon skin in this scenario. It's not well, actually I mean, black. The, but the colors do have a performance a performance a benefit benefit yeah. into them but and then you know the back side looks good so. oh yeah yeah you know the, the the technical aspects that we have here formula uh, resin infused core optimized torsional stability eight layer carbon uh, limb design unmatched stability and accuracy really sums up sums what the up. axia limb is yeah. yeah i mean i don't know what else to say about it other than can't wait for you to get your hands on these and uh, check out your Hoyt dealer or HoytTarget.com.